you very much, Mr. Hunt, uh, for doing you. an interview with us. Um, I want to congratulate you uh, and your entire family on uh, completing uh, 30 years on the stage films. Uh, and I'm sure it's been a great journey this long. Uh, I wish you tremendous success. Mm -hmm. um, so can you chat uh, with us about your journey in the industry so far and uh, what changes you kind of hope to see in the digital uh, industry for Indian cinema? So specifically with me, I mean, I've grown up in uh, this industry and seen it, you know, as a kid. But I came into New York and I studied uh, at NYU. I was an assistant before that, just for uh, the first round. Then I came here and I studied here for like three years and then I went back. And around 2006 is when I joined the industry and a lot of lot was changing around that time. Social media was coming up around the world. I think it was not just India, around the world content was having different conversations, uh, new people were coming into the business and uh, me, I think having this newfound global experience uh, was also timed right. Yeah. Um, it was having a direct impact in terms of uh, the conversations were changing in India as well. Uh, it's, it was not the same uh, earlier, it used to be much slower earlier change. So I, I found it really exciting to be part of that fast moving change that was happening. So I came in 2006 and I think that's when uh, radio was ma uh, making a big move in India yep. and a lot of studios are coming in, uh, a lot of Hollywood studios started producing there. So the, they also were pretty comfortable talking to me, understanding, uh, you know, bridging the conversations I made in the bottom over there. Since 10 years I think that I've worked, I've seen a lot of uh, the mediums of conversation, consumer habits changing. Yeah. So the medium changing, so the way you would talk about the stories and how you reach out to people is changing a lot. So at the end, I mainly handled the side of marketing and positioning. Sure. Because I knew that there were newer ways that we could have these conversations with the audiences and there was a lot more a new kind of content that people were interested in. And that's when I think around when I was 22, uh, I started writing Janna. Um, which was uh, it was unconventional because it spoke about cricket, but the dark side of cricket, something that's been revered so much in yeah. India, and a lot of people said it's a bold move. You should not do it. You know, it's uh, it's it's something that's worshipped, but uh, the audiences really gave it a thumbs yeah. up. Uh, they wanted that alternate story, um, and I think from then on. Uh, in the last few years that is now just begun is the digital platforms coming in very aggressively. I have just a year and a half ago I and started talking to some of the major digital platforms sure. and uh, we use uh, hands on Netflix Apple right. and everything. And uh, they are now very interested in doing a lot of content that they make it in India yeah. and also take it out globally. Yeah. So a lot of conversations around that. Um, we gave our film library, uh, which was uh, now not digitally available. Yeah. So we restored it, we digitized it, and we gave it to a big, respectable platform like Amazon, and it's on Apple, and it's on Play Store as well. Wow. But we gave that, now it's the BOD, mm -hmm. the audiences can experience it again. Absolutely. So that's the film movement, like as a second screen, and it's availability, and I think one, I was one of the first ones, or probably the first actually. Sure. Who decided to take a path where uh, we will do theatrical, mm -hmm. digital, right, and then TV. Uh, so turning the side, going digital. yeah, going digital first, uh, because I think that it's also our responsibility as content creators Absolutely. to create a new window, mm -hmm. uh, allow it to have that you know uh, that momentum, uh, that springboard. So for that, it was important to change the linear big broadcasters not having the right first, but the digital platforms. Exactly. So that's what I, uh, and now I think we'll start now with uh, a lot of content which is more on the basis of originals and shorts. Sure. And so. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I know your family is revered in the Indian film industry, you as well, a uh, very big part of it now. Uh, and you guys have been a big part of it for the past 30 years. Right. Um, so what milestones do you think the film industry, specifically Indian film industry, has accomplished in these past 30 years? And where do you think it's headed in the future? 30 years, it's, I mean, it's a big, uh, yeah. it's three decades. Um, I think what it's kind of achieved right now, I would say if you go to the 90s, uh, 
the 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 industry at large and our own family that the way they keep sure. this. I think uh, the way we push the, the conversations around content in the mainstream space, uh, there were uh, there was alternate and independent cinema, and I think in the last thirty years we uh, can take a lot of pride that we were responsible in mainstreaming a lot of the fringe. Uh, content because it was earlier only about family dramas and uh, rom coms yeah. and everything else. So we kind of uh, uh, we were the the dark horse on the side, yeah. which said that you know what we'll make top quality uh, non family yeah. uh, kind of films and uh, uh, with newer content and relevant content. It doesn't have to be star driven. It doesn't have to be like uh, just all sugar coated. Yeah. And I think in three decades, I what we've achieved is the overall conversation. If you see now, even the awards that happened uh, uh, yesterday, sure. uh, the kind of films that are there and now being spoken uh, about, uh, I think we've played a big role in terms of making that a universal uh, kind of phenomena. Absolutely. Of getting those films and these kind of films now uh, as big mainstream films, so a lot of a lot of mainstream actors also doing that now. So the milestone I would say is the the content space has got more diversified, sure, and uh, it's become uh, it's become more mature. It's not as dumbed down. Yeah, it's not only about entertainment yeah. in the in in the simplest form. Uh, yes, uh, Bollywood and. To make us that us mainstreaming and entertainment is not a bad word. Yeah, we also believe that there should be a component of music and everything else because the audience there is clearly coming to that window for that. Portion. Yeah. Uh, so in that, I think in that journey, we've seen that it can how it can evolve and not be uh, uh, stupid and yeah. just be interesting. Absolutely. Um, great. Uh, we've heard that Vishesh Films is entering the web space soon. Um, so through uh, through a web series, can you tell us a little bit more about this venture? So we're we're looking at. I think we just started with our YouTube channel just uh, in April, somewhere at the beginning of uh, Begum Jan, and we sure. start promoting on that. I think in the coming uh, year or two years, we're going to start very really actively producing for it. The reason being is, like I said earlier, is that the, there's a lot of audience that is now on that platform. And uh, as storytellers, this production house is a family of creative storytellers. Uh, it's important that we found that we have to be available on those platforms to tell a lot of stories uh, that are probably not uh, meant for theatrical. Sure. Uh, so around the world, the global phenomena has become this way that uh, theatrical films are the, the blockbuster summer films. It's kind of coming in India as well. But there are a lot of stories that people want to watch at the convenience of their home. So uh, we realize that if we do not go into the space, uh, we'll be limiting the stories that we can tell. And the web is now a space that we can tell a lot more, a lot more diversity, a lot more stories. It's very liberating. So uh, primarily, I think the focus is to go out there, say a lot, lot more stories that you are not, you are. Been unable to say on for a two-hour film, and uh, the other big difference in for India is that unlike uh, the U.S., uh, censorship is very tightly kept on uh, tightly and it's tight leash on uh, theatrical films. Sure, but uh, when you go digital, it's not so much of a problem. It's they are it's still lenient. I've been hearing rumors of them wanting to now regulate that. Uh, it's going to be bizarre if they do it because the whole internet they can't control. But right. what they try to do is they try to go for the professionals, right. and they want to control, control the, the professionals. But I hope that doesn't happen. So we can tell uh, censorship is not about uh, nudity and violence. The problem with censorship is when it becomes about uh, offending political parties, and that's the big challenge. And, and what offends of political parties? We don't even forget biopics or anything else. We want to change. Or maybe bring about a progressive value system, and if content is not able to push the envelope in those spaces, uh, then it becomes less compelling, For sure. and then people wonder that why is the content not working. Mm -hmm. So there is a big part over here that uh, uh, institutions around the world, I'm saying, uh, even here, the US yep. has a lot of debate over this. Need to understand that uh, beyond a the point, they cannot control conversations. 
uh, we can probably be always responsible uh, content makers, self-regulate in their own way. And because they have a brand, they want to do that. But uh, it should be something that's done by content makers themselves. There should be no free censorship in their head. Yeah. Otherwise, the content conversation just yeah, remains the same. For sure. For sure. Um, uh, we've also heard that the Ashiki franchise will continue into a third film. Yeah. Um, is this true? And uh, what new aspects will be showcased in the third film? Uh, does the story connect to part two? So, as of now, the Ashiki franchise, is a, there's a lot of conversation around it. Uh, to be very honest, it's been spoken about. We are getting a lot of uh, interest from obviously the market, platforms, studios and the audiences. Uh, we want to be true to the Ashiki franchise the same way we want to do it with 2. Yeah. It came years later. Uh, it was done, we called it Ashiki, but it was done very purely. It had a space to it, it had a commitment to music. But it was not done with this kind of market pressure because, and that's what I think made it uh, that big or unique. Yeah. Uh, so, I think from my point of view, I want uh, the Ashiki franchise, uh, contrary to what most marketers would want to do, is yeah. to bring it in a space where a lot of this uh, heated conversation around it sure. uh, kind of cools down a little bit. Because uh, what that does is it allows us to not continue the same kind of conversation as, as a story sure. that we were doing in, in, in the previous one. We can change it about a little bit and bring something fresher to the audience. So um, our aim is to set it and position it right. Okay. And uh, right now there is a lot of conversation. We just listening <laughs> okay I'll take that I'll take yeah. that as a maybe yeah that works yeah. Um, I'm sure you see lots of new talent crossing in and out of doors daily what are some important qualities you and Urbishree's film seeks for acting directing and stories in the story space uh, so there is a lot of new talent but I think uh, primarily the problem with uh, a lot of new talent and I was in that space right. well, uh, uh, someone who's gone from school and out right uh, what I've learned in the 10 years that I've worked is that uh, when you're in the process and you're doing things, you realize that there is a big uh, difference between having an idea and you know the execution. Sure, um, there are a lot of things that people with experience will tell you. A lot of them you can completely reject as well. There's no, there's no format. Right. But what experience, some sort of experience, uh, makes you understand is that the execution is a long journey or that you should have endurance for. So I think whether it's acting, directing or any other format that uh, someone wants to be part of the creative industry, they have to have two commitments made, that is endurance and commitment of time. Yeah. I think uh, time as we know today, a lot of technology is trying to make things convenient for us, sure. so things get done quicker. Absolutely. But that's not what you do when you cook something that's creative. Yeah. It has to, you have to give it respect, you have yeah. to give it time. You have to, it's it's ultimately for the audience subconsciously what they're purchasing is the time that the, the, the filmmaker or the storyteller has put to it. Absolutely. And uh, I, from my point of view is that when I interact with a lot of new talent, I think I'm always trying to understand and, I, and it's easier to understand from that point in, uh, in the conversation is that whether they spend time on what they're talking about, yes. there's just some thing that they've gone on to Google <laughs> and they searched, a, a, opened up a Wikipedia article yeah. and they're just talking out of that. Yeah. So uh, it's about living a space Yeah. Uh, in every format of this is about that lived space. Sure. Uh, when they come from that, it's always compelling. Absolutely. So even it can be wrong in terms of whether people like it or no, but there's something that becomes memorable when you connect with people from a, a space that they come in which is more honest and true themselves. Absolutely. Now, uh, a lot of filmmakers, even in the U.S., uh, have this common debate about film school versus no film school. Right. Um, you know, coming from experience, or do you want to do you want to go to film school and learn? Right. Uh, so, what's your opinion? Uh, I think that conversation is is all in, in has been going on for a while. I I don't think no one is uh, necessarily has to go to film school. Uh, the only thing I think it does is is that it uh, brings you up to a lot of conversation, sure. a lot of structure. Uh, you know how to organize your thoughts a little better. Sure. Um, 
if you can do it outside film school, um, go get a great mentor. Ultimately, the film school is acting like a mentor. Yeah. So ultimately, I think what happens is that a production house like ours is built who works with a lot of talent and there's great new talent, but they are what we call raw talent. Yeah. So that element of uh, nurturing, uh, mentoring them. One is uh, organizing their thoughts, helping them to get some clarity to their thoughts. The other element is when you are in the stream of film business, it's like sports. Yeah. Uh, holding your nerve. Now that's something you never learn in yeah. film school. Yeah. Uh, you know what stage fright is? Yeah. Stage fright is not just being in front of the camera. Yeah. It's about uh, when you go to execute. How do you, you know, how do you commit to something sure. and deliver? You know, there's there's amount of time you spend on something. But then after that, you have to put it behind you and deliver also. Exactly. Now those are some of the, the real life skills that uh, uh, very few film schools actually use courses. But it's mostly the professors maybe on the side, the mentor or another friend will tell you that you know this is how you deal with it. So ultimately, I think creativity is how people manage themselves sure. also. And that comes through the process of uh, real life work. Absolutely. And if you can get uh, some of the the technicalities out of film school, uh, I mean, it, 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 then it's yeah, then it's not necessary to go there. Absolutely. It's just uh, how a person can access that. Got it. Sure. Um, all right. We're gonna do a few rapid fire questions. Yeah. Uh, name your top three favorite Hindi films and top three favorite English films. Of all time. Of all time. Uh, I'm not good with these rapid <laughs> fires because uh, I've. Uh, I think uh, with. With English films, they just, I mean, the memorable ones would always be like, you know, the Casablancas, which are like classics, and then and then you have the newer films that uh, come in, and some of Christopher Nolan's work is, yep. is brilliant. Uh, so I think there's a diverse amount of content. Mm -hmm. I think the top threes have become a problem now All because right. of that. <laughs> but uh, same thing, I think, with uh, Hindi films also. Uh, some of the top three Hindi films are very often the ones which. Uh, probably didn't work at the box office at that time. True. So, uh, uh, there are some, a lot of greats uh, in the past that I have, uh, all still I have to watch a few of them. Yeah. But I've heard uh, great scenes from them, but you obviously have the Mughal Azams which have, uh, you know, uh, evergreen space to it. Exactly. And then there are the newer films that are there. But uh, there's some films that we've done, uh, which I'm personally really proud of, like A Gangster, which is, yep. Um, was my first film as co-creator, so but a really great uh, story. Um, I'm close to uh, my first film as a writer, which was Chandnathin. So because sure. of the way it came about and how it was made. So I, I think uh, uh, for content producers, uh, we are not, uh, we don't position ourselves or don't commit yeah. ourselves to content too much. Yep, that makes sense. Good. Yeah. Um, so what's the best advice you've ever received from someone in the industry? Don't take it too seriously. That's very good advice. So, yeah. I think it's going to help a lot of people out. Yeah. Um, a personality you look up to? Uh, like... Uh, any actor, any, any, actor. any role model that you have? I think for me it's... Uh, if I say in the entertainment space, there's, there's entertainment, there was obviously there's technology and everything. But like say from the US, I think a lot of people like you say how Steve Jobs went about yeah. doing the uh, passionately, he was obsessed with an arrogant person, but uh, he's obsessed with his ideas yeah. and, and, and through that he changed the language of even uh, hardware. Hardware was sure. a big uh, important design to I think that commitment that people like Steve Jobs and a couple of people have had. But it, even in India, I think uh, if I look at uh, people in India, especially in my family, my uncle and my father, why I really look up to them is that they've been uh, these independent filmmakers who've been in the business for 30, 40 years. Sure. They have this tremendous capacity to survive. I think that survival instinct that they have is content has changed, people have changed, but they are able to survive. So uh, the element of adaptability, uh, but putting uh, your own personal finance behind uh, uh, the stories, the courage that they came with. I think those are the things that are common across a lot of uh, big personalities around the world. That they put themselves at stake and I think these are the people that I really look up. Fantastic. Um, can you name three things that the Indian cinema has no, that no, name three things that the Indian cinema has that no other industry has? Uh, I think it's love for music and I think that is amazing 
uh, what I see right now happening with uh, A La La Land mm -hmm. is uh, for me A La La Land is, is not a musical or a western musical in any way. It's, it's a Bollywood film that's <laughs> won Oscars, right? Uh, they don't want to, they would uh, not want to claim it but it is the Bollywood classic mm -hmm. Bollywood format. Yeah. The Ashikis are La La Land, yep. right? So, uh, uh, so I think uh, it's great that now that's transporting itself around the world. Sure. Uh, so I think music is particularly one thing. The second thing that uh, Indian cinema has is uh, the, the enterprise of, of the people in it. Yeah. Uh, people would say families or whatnot. It's, it's not driven by big uh, financial structures. It's driven by people their personal money, their personal uh, 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 equations and passions yeah. and everything else. I think that kind of personality for a mature industry, it's not something that's an infant industry in a small country. It's been there for 100 years. But that the fact that uh, it's been uh, still the leaders of, of the Indian film industry are these people. Yeah. I think that's what makes it uh, survive or creates uh, the commitment. And I obviously the audience. I, it was just yesterday that I was seeing if this kind of commitment to Indian cinema was not there from the audience, I think no other industry has it. Uh, even Hollywood, yeah. the commitment is somewhat there because of the soft power that America has. Yeah. But uh, this kind of unconditional love that you get from the, the audience, it's not this Indian, South Asian audience, yeah. the, the Bollywood movie consuming audience, yeah. that is just phenomenal and unique. I think these three qualities are just strong. Fantastic. Last quick fire question. Yeah. A film you wish you could have directed? Any story out there? Uh, oh, any. Like Anything. Not, 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 not just Indian. Hmm. Something, I don't know, I think maybe Godfather scenes. <laughs> it's just uh, what Coppola does with it. I think Apocalypse Now or some of the stuff that Kubrick has done. Mm -hmm. Uh, to be able to do some of those films but I especially like uh, the way Spielberg mainstreamed a lot of uh, uh, films in terms of uh, children content mm -hmm. and mainstreamed it to a larger audience which I think Pixar followed later. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think the dreamers which these kind of filmmakers have been um, because their films are the kind of films that I would definitely see and would like to direct and me as a filmmaker. Fantastic, fantastic. Hi, my name is Dishesh Bhatt. We'll catch more content like this on 567.